Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Dominique Baptiste, and I want to welcome you tonight, praise God, as we continue our study on growing in Christ in 2014. Indeed, this is an amazing study. It's a blessing. It's blessing many, many people. We get many emails regarding this program, and so I just want to thank each and every one of you for sharing with us, praise God, and showing the love of Christ, praise God, as we share with each other. Um, I'd also like to encourage you to invite someone else to watch it along with you. You know, at the beginning we at the beginning of the year, we sent out this charge, and it's like, get you a, a, a Bible study buddy, you know, and, and watch the program together. And what we found is that we have Bible study buddies that even send us email together. Amen. You know, I was watching, and this is what I got, and this is what she got. You know, and it was, it's just a blessing to hear how God is speaking in the hearts and to the hearts of individuals um, through the ministry, as well as iron sharpening iron, even there in your local community or w on your online community of people that are also watching the study together. Now, excuse me, we, um, we're in the Holy Week, praise God, this is the week coming up to the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Some call it Easter, some call it Resurrection Day, and others just call it, um, what is it, Holy Week. Amen. That's what they're calling it at our church. So, um, so you know, I definitely want to thank each and every one of you for joining us, for joining us. And, yes, I know Easter is a pagan holiday, um, but people do celebrate it. And they celebrate not so much the pagan holiday in their hearts. They're still celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And so that's why we recognize it. Amen. Amen. So um, let's get into the word of God. We spent the last couple of days discussing, amen, talking about the Passover. We've looked at the um, th three and four dimensions of Passover. And um, tonight we want to get into the prayers of Christ. Praise God. I was looking tonight and it was, it, it was just, um, it, it was, had been on my heart all along to preach on or to teach on the prayers of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we're going to get to that. That's going to be Friday night. Amen. But uh, that's actually going to be tomorrow night, not Friday, Thursday night. Um, but tonight, I want to discuss with you John chapter 17, amen, and this is where Jesus is praying to the Father, and this prayer has been captured for us and for our admonition, for our growth, for our blessing, for us to see, just kind of to get a glimpse in or peek into the relationship that Christ had with his Father, and we can see that through prayer. Praise the Lord. So, I'm going to, we're going to start in the, I'm going to start in verse one. And there are um, some key things here that Jesus prays for. He prays one for himself, two for his disciples. And I want you to listen for these things. That's why I'm telling you in advance. Amen. Three, he prays for all disciples that will follow him ultimately. Amen. Then um, he prays that he, his eyes are lifted up to heaven, his hour has come, then he asked the Father to glorify him, with him as he was in the beginning, to restore their relationship. Amen? So, and, and we're going to take a look at this, but not only, we're going to look practically to say, okay, this is what Jesus was praying. Now, how should this influence my prayer life? How should this influence my walk? How should this influence my relationship, my knowledge, my understanding of who he is? Amen? Amen. Let's go to the word, John chapter 17. And a matter of fact, now, you know, before we get started, you guys have a real glimpse here. Of we're going to spend the next two, three days in John 17 and 18. Amen? All right. And these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes unto heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son shall glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, 
that he should give eternal life to as many as thou have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the earth was. Praise God. Praise God. You know, when we think about um, this prayer that Jesus is praying here, the the thing is, you know, when you when we think about how he prayed and what, what he had to say when he prayed, he's saying here very simply, you know, Father, I, I know it's the hour. It's, it's that time, right? You know, we know when it's, when it's that hour. Um, and what I mean by that is that each and every one of us, we have a relationship with God. And you know when a certain thing or place or people or job is kind of coming to an end. You know when it's coming to an end. And Jesus knew in his spirit. He knew in his heart because the Father made him to know that this, this is it. It's coming to an end. Your, your work is done. Your journey is complete. And so this is kind of almost like if, if, you, if you were an employee, his exit interview, <laughs> you know. And he says, um, he says, Father, the hour has come. He says, it's now. It's time. It's time. I'm, I'm done. I've done everything that you told me to do. He said, now I'm asking you to glorify me. Don't let my labor here on the earth have been in vain. He knew that it wasn't. But, you know, it, it's important to pray to God from the depth of our heart. You know, it's like some things can go. I know you think that, oh, well, God knows I need a new job. But did you ask him for one? Well, God knows, you know, I want to minister and teach the word and do it more excellently. So I need to go to school. So he needs to provide the money or the school or give me some direction. But did you ask him for that? See, this is what Jesus is doing here. He's, he's bringing it all to the forefront. He's putting it out there for, for us to hear because it's here in the scripture, but also to, you know, remind ye me. In the Old Testament it says, command ye me, but that, that word for command also says, bring, it, it says, bring to my attention. You know, bring this to my attention. You know, and so God calls us to bring things to his attention. Amen. So Jesus is saying, you know, this, this is it, Father. The hour has come. I'm ready. I've done what you told me to do. I'm just asking now that you will glorify me um, as I have glorified you. Amen. I've done what you called me to do. Now, Lord God, you know, show me your show me your grace, your favor, your power. Even Jesus himself is praying to the Father for that glorification for that blessing. Amen. And he says, he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Speaking of Christ, Jesus had power over all flesh and that he had the ability to give eternal life to as many as believe on him. That's what the scripture tells us. And this is eternal life that we may know. Now, look, look, this is defined and it's powerful that we may know be the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Amen. Know the God you serve. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Know him. That is eternal life. He said, and this is eternal life. Amen. Then he says in the next verse, he says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. O oh, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. This is Jesus Christ, even speaking of his own eternal existence. He said, give me the glory that I had with you. See, he was walking around in a terrestrial body like we are. You know, he was walking around in this human flesh like we are. But then he said to the Father, he said, now, Father, I want you to restore me to my celestial body my glorified body the one that i had with you from the beginning now this is all the prayer right before the garden of gethsemane this is the prayer right before amen the garden of gethsemane this is the prayer that went forth before amen amen this is the prayer that went forth before 
he was um he was to be arrested he was to be accosted but he knew that when he got to the when he when he got to the garden of gethsemane he wouldn't have time for this but this is something that he needed to put out in the atmosphere this is a prayer that he needed to pray so that um it's kind of the conclusion of the matter <laughs> amen Amen. As it relates to his work and his and the disciples that God had given him and the work that he was to accomplish. And now. You know, Christ is praying for the God to glorify him in his very next prayer. He starts praying for his disciples. Amen. So as he goes to the father, he starts off with father. Remember me, father, you call me father. Remember me, you know, Lord, I've done, Father, I've done what you told me to do. You know, Father, I'm just thankful, bless the Lord, that you have graced me to be in this place, in this hour. I've done what you called me to do. Now I'm asking you to restore to me the glory that you promised. Amen. And see, I love the Lord, my Father. He's, he's not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he should repent. Praise God. It is just um, Jesus bringing to his remembrance his promises. Amen. Amen. So now, and th- and that's what God wants us to do. He said, command ye me, bring it to my remembrance. Bring it to my attention. Next, in the very next set of scriptures, we're going to look at six, two through, 6 through 10. And it says, he says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou hast given me out of the world they are um, thine they were and thou gavest them to me and they have kept your word he said you know you gave them to me lord you showed me who they were amen you know they were they were your men he says now they ha- um they have received me and they have kept your word they've been obedient to what you called them to do. So now Jesus is not only praying for himself, but he's asking God to honor the disciples, honor those that follow him. Could your name fall in this group? Could you be one of those people where he could say, well, you know, we say, you you said this person saved, you pointed them out to me, they they, they answered the call, now Lord, are you one of those? Amen. Are you keeping the word of the Father? Are you keeping the word of of, of Jesus in your life? Say, what's the word of Jesus? Are you doing the thing to which you are called and created? Are you prepared? Like with his disciples up until now, all they had been doing was preparing for ministry. They were in the school of ministry. And a part of being in the school of ministry is they were learning at the feet of Jesus and then practical application by day. Amen. Are you learning? And then putting to work the thing that Christ has given you. Amen. That's what he called us to do. So when Jesus prays for you. Amen. Because the word of God says that he's at the right hand of the father doing what? Making intercession for us both day and night. Scripture even tells us that the spirit of God maketh utterance. Praise, you know, because we don't know how to pray as we ought. Which means we don't know everything that we should be praying for bless the lord the spirit of god is making prayers for us and intercessing for intercession for us both day and night bless the lord so now as he's making intercession for you what is he saying about you this is what he said about the disciples he said they're yours you gave them to me out of the world you you should reveal them to me he says and they have kept your word now they have known all things whatsoever you have given to me that thou hast given to me are of thee for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known that I came out from you from thee and have believed that you did send me I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them with that which you have given me for they are thine all of mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. 
Now, let me bring that over to English for you. <laughs> Basically, you know, um, there are a lot of thines and thous <laughs> in there. And so what Jesus was saying was, you gave them to me. I taught them what you told me to teach them. Amen. They believed it. They received it. They're acting it out. They're living it out. It has become, your word has become a part of them. It says now, <laughs> amen, I pray for them, not for the world at large, but I'm praying for the ones that you gave to me. Amen. When Jesus prays for you, when he's making intercession for you at the right hand of the Father, as, he, as he's there with the Father, um, as he's making intercession for you, what types of, what, you know, what is he saying about you? What is he saying about you? And I want you, I want you to think about it because want, this is why he's saying, I things he's saying, not exactly, but the types of things he's saying. He's saying, God, give her strength. Give him strength. God, give her wisdom. Give him wisdom. God, um, send angels to, to support and to help. Um, Father, you know, have mercy. You know, she didn't mean to say it that way or he didn't mean to do it that way or that wasn't the, the plan. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There, there's always a sin. You know, Jesus, when he's making intercession, he knows that, you know, this person, God, this, she's gr he's great. She's great. You've equipped her with everything that she needs. She just needs more boldness. Give her more time. <laughs> Amen. Give him more time. Amen. Or open the, you know, he's trying hard. And the uh, doors of opportunity are open, a d open another door. So he missed that one. Open a new door for him, Father. And, you know, show him some mercy here. Show him some grace here. Amen. Open another door. And he'll walk through that one. And then Jesus, you know, being the word of God, begins to um, minister to those around to help facilitate the plan and purpose associated with you. That's what intercession is all about. Intercession is, is praying for another, standing in the gap for another. And it literally is bridging. It's bridging the gap. It's giving the person a way to walk over what might in some cases be a valley. But instead of having the valley experience, the intercessor can stand in the middle and make a bridge. And that person can walk over on your shoulders. Bless the Lord. That's why it's important to pray for our kids. That's why it's important to pray for your spouse, for your job, amen, and those that work with you. It's important to pray for um, the people that are lost because some people need someone to hold them up in prayer. And that's literally what you're doing. You're standing in the gap so that they can cross over on your shoulders. They can cross over on your prayers. You know how... Um, there are songs out there, and there's just, there, there. I guess there's there is truth to it, but there's um there's this one song by Candy Staten. I think that's who it's by, and one of her lines in there is, "I had a praying grandmama, <laughs> amen." And we we I had a praying grandmama. Did you <laughs> bless the Lord? So you know, and I'm a, you know, and people will say, you know, I'm here on my grandmother's prayers, or I'm here on my grandfather's prayers, and those prayers, what were they doing? They were praying, Lord, hold them up. Lord, don't let them fall. Lord, don't let them run into danger. Lord, and that's the same kind of prayers we pray for our kids. Amen? Our kids, our nieces, our nephews, our neighbor's children, our leaders. Amen? We're praying that God will hold them up, undergird them. God will strengthen them. God will keep them lifted up. God will make a way out of no way. <laughs> Amen? Lord, bring them out of darkness into your marvelous light. That, and in praying that, those types of prayers over them, we then provide a bridge. So whereas at one point they may have been de they may have been walking, and now in front of them what is a is a crater. In front of them is is trials and tribulations. In front of them is um temptations, you know. But when we pray for them, we can pray, Lord, lead them not into temptation, but deliver them from evil and the evil one. And then God moves the evil and the evil one out of their way but not only that when you pray and lifting them up then it's just like when jesus when um when the children of israel were going through the red sea you know and as the spirit of god came they crossed over on eagle's wings that means that you know god they were being held up by the very spirit of god 
they were being held up. And so when, when we think about intercession, we're being held up. So Jesus here, he's praying for his disciples, and he's saying to the, he's saying to the Lord, he said, I pray for them. I'm, pu- I'm, I'm pulling them apart. I'm setting them apart. And I'm praying, God, that you will, that you will, amen, that you will bless them because you gave them to me. Now, there are seven things that Christ prays for believers in this very next set of scripture. John chapter 17, verse 11 and 15. He prays, number one, to keep them from evil. Amen. It says, for I am no longer, um, let me read this, John 17 and 11. It says, for I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come unto thee, Holy Father. Keep them through thy own name, (laughs) those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. So one, he says, keep them in thy own name. Keep them in, in you. Keep them in your character, your reputation, your fame. Keep them in your security. Amen. The name of God is a strong tower. The righteous run in, and in the name, hidden, hiding in him, we are safe. So he, when Jesus is praying here, he said, he said, keep them from evil, basically. That's what he's saying. Keep them from evil. Protect them from the world. Amen. And then keep them set aside unto yourself. Bless the Lord. And he says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, verse number 15, but that thou should keep them from evil. Amen. So he's praying in chapter 17. He's saying, keep them from evil. As Jesus is praying, he's making intercession for us. What is he? He said, pray, keep them from evil, Lord. These are mine. You've given her to me. You've given him to me. Now keep them from evil. Um, he prays for unity among all the believers, all, the, all of the body of Christ. If you look at, um, again, in 17 and 11, and then verses 21 through, tw- through 23, in that same 17th chapter, he prays that they may be one as thou art in me and I am in thee, and also that they may be one with us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given unto them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Amen. He's saying, you know, he said, I know I'm the only begotten, but but I'm praying that you will um, make them one with us such that everybody knows that they're one with you. (laughs) Amen. I've given them the glory that you've given to me. So I've given them, Jesus gave them the power to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, to evangelize, to minister, to, to preach to masses, amen, to turn, to turn, what is it, two fish, and, two fish and, and five loaves of bread into, you know, a banquet for many. I've given them the ability to work the very same miracles that you gave me to work, to be witnesses of me. Amen. I've, you gave that to me. Now I'm giving it to them. And he's praying for unity among the believers and that we would all be one with him, even at him and the father, even as they are one. One of the bl- biggest blessings in the book of Revelations is that when he talks about, he says, and he who overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in, in my father, in my throne with the father? You know, that is something that my heart longs to do (laughs) for eternity amen to to be one with the lord jesus christ such that i can sit with him and the father in the throne for eternity amen are are you thinking about your eternal destiny are you thinking about where you're going what does that mean amen And, and a part of that means to become that mature christian such that when You've taken off so much. You've allowed God to take off so much of you that that he honors you by giving you the seat in the throne with him. Amen. There's I'm sure there's plenty of room 
<laughs> Bless the Lord. You know, the throne could be like the Taj Mahal, the castle, right? Amen. Um, the third thing is that he's praying for believers of the of the seventh thing that Jesus Christ is praying for the believers. He's praying joy. The joy of Christ would fill their heart. The joy of being a Christian would fill their heart. Verse number seven, verse number 13, he says, and now I come to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might that they might have joy filled, fulfilled in themselves. Amen. He's saying, I'm saying this out loud so they'll have joy in knowing, wow, Jesus is praying for us. Amen. He's praying for us. Can you hear me? Amen. How many of you ever had the opportunity to hear your parents pray for you? Not pray over you, on you. You know, that is great, too. <laughs> Amen. But have you ever, I had the, the privilege of hearing my parents pray for me when they didn't know I could hear them. Amen. Talk to God about me when they didn't know that I could hear them. And it was one of the most profound experiences that I've ever heard because you hear, like when they pray over you, they're praying on a specific topic. But when when anybody prays by themselves, they, they pray more um, earnestly and from the depths of the depths of the depths of their heart. And you just really get to know how much of another person loves you when you can hear them pray for you. Amen. Amen. And this is what Jesus was saying. He said, I'm praying this out loud so that they can know. And so I'm telling you this now. <laughs> Amen. So that you can know that Jesus has already spoken your blessing, your healing, your divine destiny, your purpose, your appointment, your empowerment. Praise God. Your strength, your prosperity into the atmosphere. Thousands of years ago, before we ever showed up on the scene, he's already spoken it into the atmosphere. Now all you need to do is just walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. You know, in some churches they say, you know, for those of you who can get a prayer through, well, honey, Jesus got his prayer through. Now walk it out. Amen. We've got to be, we've got to be believers. Believers that the promise is fulfilled and established through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've got to walk it out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next, um, the fourth thing that Jesus prayed for us as believers and for the disciples in particular is for sanctification and separation um, to fulfill the work that God has called them and created them to do and that they've been set apart to do. And if you take a look at verses 17 through 19, it says now, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is thy truth. Amen. It says, as thou hast sent, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through thy truth. He said, now, he said, I've sanctified myself. You've, you've sanctified me and set me apart. And for their sakes, I walked in that sanctification so they could see my godly living. Now, sanctify them through your truth, which means make this work, set them apart to the same work, to the same ministry to which you have called me. Amen. Sanctification is not a church you go to, but it's a lifestyle that you lead. It means to be called apart and set apart. And Jesus prayed to the Father that he would sanctify you. Amen. Set you apart. See, we have the truth, which is the word of God. Amen. And so then we must walk in that separation from the world. Jesus even told us to come out from among them and be ye separate. Bless the Lord. So we have to come out and be separate. Amen. And Jesus said, I live this life of being ostracized by the by by organized religion or whatever it was of the day. Um, he said, I live this life. I live this life of battling with demonic powers and winning. Amen. I live this and I did it in front of them. Amen. And we walked from city to city and from place to place. I laid hands on people on the, on the sick and I raised the dead and I cast out devils so that they could see now how to do it. Amen. 
Amen. See, there are so many, so many, so many individuals that want to tell you, go. You don't want to just, you know, let's say go witness. But Jesus took his disciples witnessing. That's why we have to be careful just sending our children to church. You don't just send them to church. You take them to church. Why? Live a life such that men will see the Christ in you and that they will want to know the Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Um, number five, and we have three more to go, um, world recognition of God's love for all believers. Um, let's look at verse number 24, 17 and 24. And it says, Father, I will also, <coughs> whom thou hast, I will also, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Jesus, what is he praying here? He's praying, he said, Lord, Father, I'm going to pray for their eternal destiny. I want you to bring them to where we are. Amen. In glory. So that they can see, not only did I just tell them about you, Not only do I kind of sort of know you, but that we have an amazing relationship. Amen. And they can see the glory that you've given me even before the foundation of the world. Now, we know that Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. He was telling the Father, he said, I want them to know how much I love them. I want them to know how who who I really am. Amen. I am their redemption but I am the slain lamb. Amen. I am the slain lamb, the resurrected lamb. Bless the Lord. Amen. So, you know, that, that's the beautiful thing. Jesus is, is willing to take off. Amen. The, 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 the Jesus suit, so to speak, the human suit, and say, this is who I am in the spirit. And I want them to see that glory. I want them to see the slain lamb. I want them to know that I've been here from the beginning. Amen. He said, I want them. They've experienced me, the word. They've experienced me, the Christ. They've experienced me. But now I want them to see me as I was with you in the beginning from the foundation of the world. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Christ ever wants to reveal himself to us, to each one of us. And he's praying, you know, as he's making intercession for us, he's interceding for us the same way he did for the, reci- for the disciples. Keep them from evil. Bring them into unity with us, Father. God, let their lives be filled with joy because they know me. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? Sanctify them and keep them separate from the world. Amen. Let them be called out separate from among them. Um, let, Let them see the glory of the relationship that we have. Bless the Lord. And so that they can behold the glory and be them be vessels of glory, partakers of that glory. Um praise in verse number 24 that you know and then bring us all back together bless the lord so that they can see the glory bless god so those are the those are the seven things one that he keep them from evil two that they would come into unity with him and the father three that they would be filled with joy knowing that jesus had prayed for them and to see the manifestation of what he had prayed that they would be sanctified and walk in the sanctification that he had taught them that they would have the recognition of God's love, the word recognize God's love for believers. And then lastly, that they would come and have a reunion with Christ and is one. And then um, that they would see Christ in his eternal glory. Bless the Lord. So these are the seven things that Jesus prayed in the um, in the 17th chapter that's critical and that's very, very important for us as believers. Amen. Indeed, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you both day for all of us, day and night. That's what he does now. Amen. He's given the spoken word. He's making the intercession for us. And in return, we are just to walk it out. Now, if you, I know sometimes we feel like nobody prays for us. Nobody loves us, you know, and, um, but the reality is Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you. 
and he's always praying for you. He's ever at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you day and night. Bless God. He's praying that God keep you from evil, that he bring you into a closer relationship with you and the Father. Amen, that you be sanctified. Bless the Lord, and that eventually, ultimately, you come into his glory. Amen, there's so much that he's praying for you because he loves you. Amen, amen. Well, listen, it's been a blessing to share with you this evening. I pray God's richest and highest blessing upon you. Um, Coming up right after the holy day, our holy days events, praise God, as we recognize the resurrection of Jesus Christ and remember his um, crucifixion upon Calvary, then um, we're going to have our own day of prayer. We're going to, this is, you know, it's May, so we have the international prayer call in the month of May. And I just want you to start getting your hearts and mind ready for it. And as you pray over the next, I'll say, several days coming up to Resurrection Day, I pray that you'll go back and read John chapter 17, Read the prayers of Christ and let that prayer of Christ make it your own. Because when he prayed for the disciples then, even that word is ours for now. Bless the Lord. Well, I love you in Jesus Christ. This is Dominique Baptiste, and this is Biblical Essentials. God bless.